Five things that's Liangzhou culture in the Philippines. Number one, Neolithic Philippines maritime jade trade. A trail of Ling Ling Owen by Cephalus nephrite jade artifacts found in the Philippines and neighboring Taiwan, Thailand, Burma, Cambodia, and Vietnam indicate that sometime in the late 3rd millennium BC, a thriving international maritime jade trade was born. Nephrite jade was imported by prehistoric Filipinos from Taiwan and brought to our islands where local craftsmen skillfully work the material that is harder than iron or steel into sophisticated forms of cultural significance. Early Filipinos seem to have traversed the rivers and seas with ease as they traded these ancient masterpieces internationally. Approximately the same time as the appearance of this Philippine jade culture was the mysterious disappearance of the peoples composed of many different communities that archaeologists have called the Liangzhou culture from the lower Yangtze River area. The late Neolithic Liangzhou culture with its sophisticated jade culture seemed to have packed up every jade working tool and left around 2250 BC. Incidentally, thousands of nephrite tools have been found by Otley Buyer, in the Philippines. Number two, mega city builders with the same construction methods. Before the Liangzhou culture disappeared from the lower Yangtze River area, they had built the biggest pan regional urban center of that age, a mega city with a walled interior area of over 290 hectares with a 30 hectare central palace. They built on wetlands where rivers meet and used the waterways for transportation and irrigation, augmented with rammed earth walls, like a network of roads in and out of the main city. Constructing rammed earth walls, large rammed earth platforms, and even building an artificial 7-hectare mound of imported sand. Although not megalithic builders, they did like to use dressed cobblestones in their construction. Along Manila Bay, on the Philippine island of Luzon, in the wetland areas where many rivers meet to empty into the sea, we find rammed earth walls that go on and on as far as the eye can see. These walls are connected to geometrically shaped, flat platform islands with straight lines and 90-degree angles, not normally found in nature, littered with dressed cobblestones. There are islands of black sand over a kilometer in length protected by walls and connected to the platform islands by the walls. Soil that had eroded fairly recently has revealed that many rivers and creeks were actually guided by rammed earth walls. These same man-made structures have been observed in Balagtas, Bulacan, over 10 kilometers away, indicating a very large ancient city whose scope we have yet to discover. Number 3. The Evidence in Our Genes DNA analysis of Liangzhou culture remains. In 2007, revealed high frequencies of haplogroup O1 that appears with the same high frequencies along the coasts of southern China, the Pacific Islands, Madagascar, Taiwan, and the Malay Archipelago. Haplogroup O1 DNA is linked to Austronesian and Taikadai speakers. The Filipinos are Austronesians whose country lies in the Malay Archipelago. Number 4. Rice Lovers Most modern Filipinos will agree it's not a real meal unless there's rice. It's a rare Filipino who can survive a day without rice. Cultural importance is shown by the number of Filipino words for rice. Palay, bigas, kanin, sinaing, sinangag, lugaw, malagkit, kakanin. Unlike other ancient Chinese cultures that cultivated multiple grains like barley, wheat, and millet, it seems the Liangzhou culture communities stayed true to their first love. Rice! The Liangzhou culture had a very high level of rice paddy cultivation and hydrological technologies for irrigation, building dikes and dams up to 8 kilometers away. Their city had a granary with storage capacity for 15,000 kilograms of rice. Rice was serious business, and it may have been some of their early communities that had developed the rice grains for cultivation. Could it be a coincidence that the same obsession with rice may be found in the Austronesian and Taikadai peoples of Southeast Asia? Number 5. Liangzhou Culture Nephrite Artifacts in the Philippines For a country with no known nephrite jade deposits, the Philippines has an abundance of nephrite jade artifacts telling a story of our past, literally written on stone. 
every important ritual burial item, like the Bai discs, seen to represent the circle of heaven, the Kong, believed by some to represent the earth, and heavenly endowed authority on the earth, the Ye Axe, held by leaders like the royal scepters of the West. Distinctive Liangzhou culture motifs are emblazoned on these nephrite artifacts to ensure that we make no mistake as to who the master craftsmen of these artifacts were. Thus, it appears that the peoples called the Liangzhou culture communities by China has been termed the Austronesians and Taikadai speakers by modern scholars and may have been the peoples called Tarshish by the Jews and Phoenicians, the people who inherited the coastlands and had many kings among them, living at the ends of the earth, near Ophir, in the lands of gold. William Henry Scott, one of the Philippines' great historians, wrote, It is a fond adage of historians that a people without a history is a people without a soul. Thank you for joining us in opening the book of the past in hopes for a brighter future, learning history, five things at a time.